Greetings, Earthlings. It's Soph and some special guests tonight. We'll get to that. But happy almost Halloween. We are super excited because today we're going to be talking about the one, the only Halloween Horror Nights. We know it. We love it. We all go to it. Most of us, unless you're scared of scary movies and all that stuff. But it's totally worth a trip and it is very thrilling. I want to shout out first that I am with the awesome Natalie, obviously my lovely partner, Natalie, and her wonderful boyfriend, Matt. I call them Natalie because I can't get them straight. <laughs> Here they are. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome right, to the Travel Rat Tribe do. again, Matt. <laughs> thanks for having me. Sure. Thanks for coming on again, guys. We love Halloween Horror Nights, all three of us. I know that, Matt, you and I have done some haunted houses before, kind of in different states, different cities. Mm -hmm. And Natalie, you kind of got introduced to Halloween Horror Nights, I think, a couple years ago. So let's talk a little bit about that. Why Halloween Horror Nights? Well, actually... It's funny because last year I did Halloween Horror Nights for the first time and I told Matt, who loves haunted houses and haunted things, that I had never been in a haunted house before. In all my years on this earth, I had never been in a haunted house and then all of a sudden here I was about to do 10 in one night. So my <laughs> only experience of haunted houses is last year doing 10 in one night and this year doing 10 in one night. And so I feel like I'm spoiled <laughs> because Halloween Horror Nights is kind of like the epitome of theming and all that has to do with scariness. And I mean, it's not like as scary as I'm sure you can get when it comes to haunted houses. But as far as my introduction to haunted houses, it's pretty epic. And I will say that I definitely... I, I, I definitely had to hold very tightly to Matt's hand throughout every single house. <laughs> so that's my introduction to Halloween Horror Nights. And my why is because my boyfriend said, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Natalie. So obedient. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's like zero to 100, or I guess technically zero to 10 real quick, since you guys did yeah. 10 haunted houses. I don't know how in one night because I'm just lame and I couldn't make it. <laughs> But it's so much fun. And honestly, like my background with it was I have been to some other ones. I think probably the, the scariest ones I've ever been to is Netherworld in Atlanta. Um, that'll make you pee your pants. But again, it's only two. And I love Halloween Horror Nights. The first year I went, I did not have the greatest experience because it was like the end of COVID. And they still mm -hmm. had like, <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever. They still had um like glass, not glass, plastic like over glass. everywhere that things popped out. So like these things would pop out at you and just hit the glass and you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, this is stupid. But then the second year I went back and I really liked it. And then this is my third year there. Um, so I would say I really love it. And Matt, how many times have you been? Um, <clears throat> well, where I grew up in Poughkeepsie, there's a couple haunted houses in the area, like Headless Horseman and uh, Kevin McCurdy. So I've been going to haunted houses since I can remember. So this is, I mean, I just went to one two nights ago or so <laughs> up here in New Hampshire. Master. Yeah, I love, I love spooky. It's, it's the best time of the year. It's the most wonderful time of the year, as, as they say. <laughs> I can just see him. Have you done Halloween Horror Nights other times or have the two times we've gone been the only times? Just us. Yeah, the time that we went. Um, my sister had gone a few years in a row a couple of years ago and she kind of told me about it and, and really sold me on it so it was something that I've wanted to do for a couple of years and then we the opportunity showed its face and we dove on it so it's, been really it's great. funny you two in the partnership with going to Halloween Horror Nights were like I went with my little sister so it was like my little sister was probably the Natalie where like the first time I took her last year she literally like did not she'd never been in one and so she just starts screaming like freaking out she's pushing me I'm laughing so hysterically that I can't even breathe like I can't walk because she's I'm like laughing so hard at her because I've never heard her scream like that. And she's like pushing me, get out, get out, get out. And that, you know, you the more you scream, the more they scare you. So like, she's mm -hmm. like dying and they all keep jumping out at her. And I'm literally like, I can't even handle this. And then this year she was like, okay, I'm gonna play it cool. I'm gonna play it cool. But she'd do this thing where like, if she got too scared, she'd be like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and it was so funny. <laughs> So here I am laughing at her and she's like having a panic attack, which is super mean, but that's what big sisters are for. <laughs> so anyway, it's fun. You guys can talk about like 
oh, romantic Natalie, save me, Matt. Just kidding. <laughs> and my little <laughs> sister's like, get me out of here. <laughs> but anyway, we'll go ahead and jump in because it's really fun. I wanted to start by just telling our travel brats a little bit of tips and tricks or treats about Halloween Horror Nights and just how to kind of navigate through because believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this and then they get either kicked out of the park or they forget to jump in a line and blah, 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 because it does get confusing if you don't follow the rules. So tip one, Halloween Horror Nights, it's open every night of the week except for Mondays and Tuesdays. So again, if you're going to the park uh, just as a normal, you know, normal person, <laughs> I would suggest during Halloween or during the times <clears throat> that Halloween Horror Nights is open, I would really go Mondays and Tuesdays if you're trying to stay late. Unless you want to hop on the Express or go out the, uh, the Hogwarts Express or go through the park and go back into Islands of Adventure. Because Islands of Adventure is still open um, till 8 p.m. because Universal is the Halloween Horror Nights is only in the Universal Park. So that's a, a tip. You know, if you didn't know, if you guys didn't know that, you can still make it work. You can still go to the regular park. I would suggest not going to the regular park and then going to Halloween Horror Nights, or at least all day. Because I know you guys started at like four o'clock. We started at like 11, so we didn't start at like eight or nine, but it was still like by 12 o'clock, I was dead. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be a suggestion I would have. Um, and then at 5 p.m. in Universal, everyone gets kicked out. Um, and you need to be in a holding area by 5 p.m. And the first house houses open, I believe two of them open at 515. Like in this case, it was Insidious and Ghostbusters. Um, and there was one more in that holding area that opened at 530 and then some of the other ones open at six. So just kind of like, we just kind of asked around. I'm sure it's somewhere online. Like you go to the, you know, the website, but if you're just there and you forgot and you don't have internet or whatever, phone's almost dead. Matt had a great tip. Bring your portable charger, especially if you're there all night. <laughs> but if you guys are there and you don't know, just literally there's employees everywhere. Just say, Hey, you know, what's this holding area? What is it for? When does it, when does this haunted house start? Cause that's how we found out. Okay. Let's go to one that opens at 5 15. Um, and then if you are trying to figure out like, okay, do you want to go to the park all day? Or like, can I make it through Halloween Horror Nights in one night or blah, blah, blah. Here's kind of what we, we thought. And again, if you're like a hardcore diehard extreme energy, like Natalie and Matt, <laughs> then go for it. You can make it all in one night. You know, you could start at four, but I'm a little bit lazier. <laughs> I'm a little bit slower and lazier. Okay. And less out of shape or more out of shape. Sorry. A little more out of shape than them. So I would say if you want to do them all in one night and you're lazy, like soap, you can pay the 200 extra for an express pass to do it in one night or it is like $100 plus cheaper if you just bought two tickets, which is kind of crazy. But to go like one night and the other night, because the tickets are only 85, you could go like a Saturday and a Sunday or Friday or, you know, any day but Monday and Tuesday and just do two nights. Do five houses in one night, do another five in the show and another. Um, and then that kind of, you know, if you're there for like a week, why not? Unless you don't want to spend the money. But that's just a couple different options um, or just chug a Red Bull and power through. So those are our main tips um, to have a successful time and get to all the haunted houses in an orderly fashion. <laughs> now, I have to say, for those watching on YouTube, all right, everybody, show what you're repping. Jeez. So for those listening on the podcast, we all have a horror, a Halloween Horror Nights shirt on. So we're we're representing with our with our T-shirts. Mine is a really cool long sleeve shirt that has like glow in the dark um, parts on the arm. Um, so just a total aside. But one thing <laughs> too is that Matt and I wanted to get into the line early enough so that when the houses were open, like that first section with Ghostbusters and with Insidious, that we were early on enough in the line. And we had read somewhere that as long as you're in the line by like, what was it, 4, 4.15, Matt? Yeah, as long yeah. as you're in the line by around 4, 4.15, then you're going to be in a good place to get into the house pretty quickly. So oh. we were actually, like, you can get in line as early as... I think three. 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 I think three is the earliest they let you in the line. So even when we got there to get in the line, it was like a little bit before four o'clock and the line wasn't like crazy long yet, but it was still relatively. It, it wasn't short. Yeah. It wasn't short, but we were able to get into the house 
um, relatively quickly. So that was great. And so we just, yeah, we just stood in the line and waited with our friends for that hour and a half. But sometimes it's like, if you are trying to do the park and do Halloween Horror Nights, which I mean, yeah, Matt and I, we are crazy and we try to do it all in one night, but I don't know that we would ever try to do that. Like that is a next level of like, if you're getting to the park at nine or 10, or even like you and your sister getting there at 11 o'clock, like no wonder by 12, you know, midnight, you were worn out because you'd already been there for 13 hours. So yeah. you know, we went to the park around three, three thirty, got to the line by four. So by the time Halloween Horror Nights was done at 2 a.m., we hadn't even been at the park for 12 hours. So it's like we we were like totally fine. I don't think we were, I mean, of course we were tired. I mean it had been a long night of walking and standing in lines, but we were also not as worn out as of course we would have been had we tried to do a day at the park. So that is why I definitely like Sophia's idea of if you can, if you have the time and the resources to spend the money on an extra night, then like, that's a great idea because first of all, then you can go a little lighter on both nights. You can go as hard as you want or as light as you want. And then that middle day, like you can go to the park during the day yeah. or you can go to the park, go to the park at noon get in a couple hours of the park, both days, you know, it depends on how long your trip is, you know, with Matt and I being season pass holders. And for me living in Florida, it's very easy for us to take a day trip. Like we did, you know, mm -hmm. you just go in, you do the thing and then, you know, you're driving back and it's, it's like a crazy adventure. It's like a whirlwind, like 36 hours, but it's great. And you do the thing, but obviously most people that are going to be coming to Halloween Horror Nights and making an event of it are going to be coming from out of state or from further away. So you're probably going to be there for a couple of days and you're going to want to make a universal trip that also includes Halloween Horror Nights. So obviously, Soph, you did two nights and you kind of spread it out a little bit more. Uh, is that right? Oh, no, or I wish I did two nights. So we oh, did one, but we okay. only made it to seven. Um, we're Got like, it. you guys did all 10. So like if seven we made it to- still Seven is still really solid. Like that's a Thank great, you. you guys left at like midnight. So you would have easily like that's, and Matt and I will talk about this throughout the episode, but we're going to say over and over again, it's actually, you really can do 10 houses. It's only 10 houses. I mean, I say only, that's still a lot, but you can do 10 houses. You can see the show. You can have some food. You can, it. it's possible. Yeah. And yes, you are definitely trying to pace it you're not going to want to like linger anywhere but the fact that you guys were able to accomplish seven houses and still left two hours before the night ended tells me oh you could have easily done it you know if you wanted yes. to if you wanted to push through you could have easily done it so that's the great thing is that it is accomplishable and so yeah we'll talk about that a little further but I just wanted to kind of throw that in there yeah, you're so right. I feel like la last year, because it was my, it was her first year, my sister's first year at Halloween Horror Nights. Again, we did the park from like eight to like when Halloween Horror Nights started. And then we did, I think it was seven or eight houses. I think we did more than this year in that one night. And I literally just couldn't feel like my body the next day. And even this year, like even only starting at 11, we got out of our first haunted house because we went into Insidious first. Travel Brats, we'll go into detail on it later. But the the wait was literally like an hour and a half for it. So we got in, the, I think, the wrong line first when Ghostbusters was only like 50 minutes and we waited like an hour and a half for Insidious. But we get out and I was like, I need water because we waited in the sun and I was dying. I chugged like two Gatorades and a water. <laughs> and I was like, we've been here all day. I've been sweating. Like I didn't, I didn't feel it until we got out and like back into the sun. And I was like, uh Oh, my eyes and like my heart, <laughs> but wow. yes, it, it was definitely a lot. And again, it's, I feel like you have to also enjoy it. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah. The way we would enjoy it is if we literally came, you know, at late afternoon and just kind of went ham with, Halloween Horror Nights. The other thing that you mentioned that is a really good point is with the Express Pass, um, or not with the Express Pass, with the Season Pass, 
is the only way you're able to get in that early into a holding area. So travel brats, if you just have a uh, past two Halloween Horror Nights, you have to wait outside the park. I believe it's until like six or something until it opens. You can't get in early and get in a holding area unless you have a season pass. So again, this is that was kind of for season pass holders. Um, just so you know the difference in case you just have a ticket and you're like, hey, travel brats, they won't let me in. So um, <laughs> you can buy, I think, Matt, can you buy stay in Scream? Yeah, you can buy access to the to the way the holding area is yeah. on top yeah. of it i think mm -hmm. last year was like 30 or 40 bucks i'm not sure how much it was this year but yeah you can actually buy into that the holding areas and that's worth it right like that's i would say if you want to if you want to get all the houses done i would say that that would definitely yes. be worth it so guys if again if you don't have a season pass you can do that but just you have it's on top of the ticket so you know cool well those are our main tips does anybody have any other general tips for halloween horror nights before we get uh, into the haunted houses i have a tip I, I do have a tip that uh, we haven't touched on yet um go during the week like early in the week like wednesday mm. <laughs> going during wednesday because you know it's it is school time so around midnight everyone kind of leaves because they have school or work the next day and then because i mean when we got four houses done from you know midnight on and i think did we do anything twice i don't think we did anything twice but no, but no, yeah, but we, we could have because there was like five minute waits. It was a walk on for any of the houses on the way out. It was it was pretty wild. So like That's twelve o'clock awesome. on, the, the whole place empties out, and you can just go to any one of them that you want. You yeah, because we went on Wednesday. So uh, that's and awesome. That, that of course we typically don't go on the weekends ever when when mm -hmm. we go <laughs> just because we know that it's going to be crazy. Now, granted. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they travel, don't have the luxury of, of going during the week. And, and that was our luxury. And I'm glad that we we're able to do that. But if you have the choice, I would agree, Matt, like go on a Wednesday or a Thursday, because truly it was unbelievable. Like the park, it changed so much around midnight. Mm -hmm. People either similar to you. So if they were like, oh, we're tired. We're done. We've done enough houses or it's late. We got school tomorrow, whatever, whatever. And so, yeah, we were able to do, I think it might've been five. I think we had, wow, like, yeah. I think it was either four or five, but we were able to get a lot done in that last two hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so nice because we went on a Sunday thinking it would be a lot less crowded than a Saturday or a Friday. Mm -hmm. And it really, I don't think it was not that I know <laughs> for sure, but it was like, Sunday would be just. Say? I would say that Sunday would be just as good as Wednesday. So that's, that's kind what of I thought. But I mean, it was again, like I would say the average like wait time was like 80 minutes. I mean, it was a lot. Yeah. And not not the beginning. There were some houses that were like, you know, when it first starts they're like 50, 45, 60. But then like the rest of the night they were 80. But what you guys said about the later, like between 12 and two, we left it right. We're like at 12. But then when we left, I saw all the wait times drop by like, 20 30 40 minutes for some and I was like dang it we should have like just laid on the ground and taken a nap for two hours and then like <laughs> carried on <laughs> so it's good to know where I was telling my mom that I was like ma she was back at the hotel like drinking wine and we got back and she's like how was it and I was like we made it to seven out of ten ma I'm like <laughs> and she's like oh well you know it's late you know you guys wanted to come back you know don't kick yourself but I was like yeah we we did we did okay but that's good to note where like I feel like from the time period of like 9 p.m. to 12, it got crazy and really packed. Um, mm. So anyway, Sunday, maybe better than Saturday. Couldn't tell you. But Wednesday, guys, go Wednesday. All righty. Well, I want to jump into these houses with you guys and compare and contrast a little bit. I kind of want to play this new game, underrated, rated, or overrated. So I have taken Natalie's list since she has done all 10. And Matt, you have two. Don't get your feelings hurt. But I just chose Natalie because she's a girl. Just kidding. Did I say that out loud? Um, because I like her more. And just kidding. And I want to just kind of run through these. And you guys just chime in. Let me know what you think. And we'll give the travel brats a little lowdown on where they should start and what they should skip or where they should end. All right. So Slaughter Cinema was Natalie's number one. I didn't go to it. So. <laughs> So sad that you didn't go to this one. I just thought it was the theming. And this is something that Matt and I talked about in a 
a previous episode that we did this season on Universal. We'll we'll uh, shout it out again later in this episode. But we talked about the theming of Universal and just how impeccable all of the theming is for the whole park. And so it's no surprise that that is leveled up when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights and all these houses. It's like the sets and the costuming and like everything. I mean, it's so funny, of course, here I am, I'm an actor. So I pay attention to like all of that kind of stuff. And I'm sitting there. Part of the reason why I was like, okay, I can do this is because I'm sitting there thinking they're just actors. They're just like me. They get paid to do this. They're jumping out. They're scaring me, but they're just a, you know, an actor just like me who's trying to make it in this world, you know? And so that like helps me not be so scared, but honestly, it is really cool to see these people who are, you know, performing and coming out in these epic costumes in these incredible sets. And so you're just walking into these masterpieces. And for me, I thought the, was it Slaughterhouse Cinema or was it just Slaughter Cinema? Slaughter, Slaughterhouse, I don't know. Matt Michael, Mr. Michael. (laughs) Slaughter Cinema. Okay, that's right. It was just Slaughter Cinema. And it was so cool because every room was a different theme based on like a movie so it was like you'd go into a little hallway and you'd see posters of what the scary movie you were about to walk into was about oh that's cool and they were all really cool and and unique themes and so for me I just loved that like every room was a different theme so it was this excitement about oh and personally being someone that isn't used to haunted houses I liked the preview Mm -hmm. you know walking through the hall and seeing the posters so that I kind of knew what I was like getting myself into when I walked into the room and so yeah I just thought that the theming of that one was really cool and it was like how many different themes Matt I feel like within that house alone it was at least seven or eight different like unique scary movie like they weren't like based on actual scary movies they were like their own unique wow. thing like one of them was like a scary santa one of them was like um a mummy situation and uh i mean there there were all just really cool different themes and so that for me was a a 10 out of 10 i loved that one um and i Love think that, i don't think it was your favorite but i know you enjoyed it yeah it was definitely up there and another thing about to piggyback on the theming they had a little like you know it's slaughter cinema so they had a little movie playing in the line while you're waiting and it showed a little preview of all the house like the little segments of the house that you were about to see like trailers for the movies that they were actually you know putting on inside the house and they were trailers that were like set in like the 40s and 30s and 50s and 60s like all like mid-century type era stuff so it just it had this really cool feel so yeah you're watching these like previews these commercials for these movies it was i i just thought the whole thing really cool with that particular house they Mm -hmm. just did a really good job all around i like that so it wasn't like all just slaughter it was just like different see that's why okay that's why we skipped it because i like spooky i'm not the biggest like oh you know chopped up legs arms head so we went the first two we went into well insidious no but like gosh oh i won't spoil too much but like two of them were like so gory that i was like yeah well slaughter cinema i mean come on slaughter like keyword slaughter i was like we'll just skip that one it's at 105 minute wait or whatever (laughs) as we walked past it so, but that is really cool. That's one I definitely wish we saw now. And gotta love a, a bad Santa, Natalie. Yeah, that sounds pretty. <laughs> it, it actually, like I, I think I had said to our friends Shane and Callie, like, man, wouldn't it be fun if one year they had a Christmas themed haunted house? <laughs> and then we walked into that room, and it was like haunted, creepy Santa room. And I was like, oh my god! And I looked back, I was like, guys. Santa, Santa. Cole, Cole and murder. <laughs> Wait, but honestly though, uh, have you guys seen, uh, what is it? Is it Bad Santa? No, not Bad Santa. That's like a comedy. Um, Black Christmas. That movie is terrifying. 
that's on a side note if you guys are really into the you know if you're like natalie and you're really into that dark christmas stuff just kidding <laughs> go see black christmas <laughs> but anyway that that matt so natalie you know your wonderful girlfriend's opinions are on this this house they sound like they were rated not under or over yes yeah i think they're rated i mean it depends on who you ask it might be underrated but it's definitely it was one of the better houses of the year definitely top two or three Good. But I would say underrated. I did not expect anything from the house. And I didn't think that the theming was very, like you said, Sophia, based on what you thought it was, it was something very different. I was just like slaughter cinema. Like I, I, my brain didn't really know what to expect. And so I think for me, it felt like it was underrated and oh. I was just like, yeah, it was just really cool. So, yeah, it sounds it's, like for me, it'd be underrated too. Yeah, it's it's interesting because it reminded me of one of our favorite houses from last year, which oh. was the monsters, where they showed you the the movie posters of the actual monster movies, and then you went in into a scene of that movie. So it was kind of Reminis the same thing <laughs> essentially, but but done really well. They did it really well. It's one of my favorites for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, travel brats, don't miss that one like me. <laughs> And number two is Insidious. This is the first one I went on with the like 140 minute wait in the hot sun, which was really an experience. Good thing the little girl in front of us like con consistently, there was like a 12 year old little girl in front of us and she kept asking us questions, which I thought was cute. And then like an hour and a half later, I was like, okay, get this girl out of here. But she was like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite animal? I have a pet snake. Do you like snakes? And so anyway, it was cute. It was funny. Um, But honestly, the funniest thing ever was going through this terrifying house with this little girl behind me, just like, or in front of me, sorry, in front of me, just like, oh, whoa. Oh, that's cool. Like, whoa, she was not scared at all. And I was like, this is amazing. And then I, I would give Insidious like, like maybe one out of 10, I would give it like a 8.5. I thought it was pretty good. And I thought like the, the character, like the characters and the costumes and the, you know, like Natalie said, the theatrics I thought were well done. And like, it was kind of spooky and scary. And I've seen that movie and that movie's creepy. So uh, like for me and the jump scares and all that, I would say the end of it was like, I was not super scared the whole time, but I just thought it was cool until the end where like the like devilish thing jumped out and it's like claws, just like, like it just like basically almost grabbed my face and I like couldn't get out. So I like leaned back and like, I was like, whoa. And my Kayla was like, ah! She's like freaking out behind me. But I was like, oh my gosh. And it th that did scare me. I was like, they got me right like at the doorway out. So um, yeah, what'd you guys think of it? I loved it. It was definitely one of my favorite houses. I would say it's it's on you know online reading up about the houses. It's definitely people's top two that and slaughterhouse are the top two that people are talking about right now. You know, Insidious, the movie, the first one at least, was one of my favorite scary movies that I've seen in a long time. So I was really excited about this house, and that's why we tackled it first. Um, oh, you guys did yeah. it first too. Yeah, we went right after it. All right, so no, we were... Ghostbusters first. No. We did Ghostbusters second. We did Insidious first? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, that goes to show. Okay, so <laughs> we did Insidious first and then went to Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. And I and I remember why now, because of the same reason you did Insidious for, oh no, actually, well, we thought that Insidious, the lines would get much longer for Insidious later. So, I mean, that makes sense why we did that. And Ghostbusters, the line was still relatively short comparative it was extremely short and then as soon as we got off of it it was up at like 90 minutes so we we yeah. caught the wave really nicely yeah it was like a five wave. minute wait 10 minute wait when we got on it and by the time we got off it was up to 90 it was crazy yeah. but That's yeah awesome. is, again for me i've never seen the movie i didn't know what to expect but i thought the beginning with like the voice and like you're walking through this dark hall you see the big door and like the voices i mean it was definitely creeping me out and I yeah I mean obviously I put it as my my top it's in my top two so it's it definitely stands up to the hype yeah yeah that's definitely. definitely one you guys have to hit and then number three Goblin's Feast I actually was I I under I underrated this um no sorry I don't understand common sense I over <laughs> I cannot speak I didn't think this was going to be nearly as good as it was and so we were waiting so long in this, and this was kind of our 
it was either our last house or our second to last house where I told my sister, like, this better be good. <laughs> and we're like taking selfie videos for travel rats. And I'm like, oh, Goblin's Feast. Cause like Goblin's Feast better be good. Or I'm going to get so mad because we've been waiting in this line for like 80 minutes since our last house. And I feel like I'm going to die. But we went in there and I was like, okay, totally worth it. Really liked it. Um, Just like the whole thing I thought was really good. And I just didn't expect the whole Goblin's thing to be scary. And it was. So I was pretty impressed by it. What about you, Matt? Um, I, it was definitely like on the upper middle part of the park for me, of, of all the houses. Um, I, I definitely was pleasantly surprised by it. I'll say that. So I I had underrated it myself personally going into it, but I, I definitely enjoyed it. It was a good time. Same. And yeah, like 9.5. What I loved about Goblin's Feast that I think was similar to what they did with Slaughter Cinema was that the, I mean, there wasn't necessarily like a movie playing, but the the actual place that you walked into was decorated on the outside. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't do that for all of the houses. I think, honestly, maybe Goblin's Feast was one of the only ones where it was literally this cottage, this creepy cottage that they built on the outside and it just looked really cool. And they had sounds of like, medieval like you know people screaming and goblins making noises and they had all these different um yeah just like sounds and then the beautiful cottage the creepy beautiful cottage that you saw and I love the like medieval time period that kind of like you know Shrek but creepy <laughs> Shrek but they could kill yeah. me uh kind of vibe and so I just I really liked the the whole time period of it all as well and I think I kept my expectations pretty low across the board so that I could keep my mind open about things and yeah Goblin's Feast was definitely one that like surprised me I was like oh that was like it definitely was like I don't even want to say that it was fun but it was kind of fun yeah. like it was just I really enjoyed looking at all the different like things that they had created like one room where it had that um that water oh gosh what do you call it I'm thinking of a windmill right now but you know the those old school things that spin and they they're in water and um oh um oh what is that Matt Mr. Michael oh. Mr. Michael <laughs> I know what you're talking about, but I don't know how to just call it. It's where you, like, you get power from it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like okay, a, well, yeah. The yeah water mill? Like, <laughs> yeah, water, we'll call water it that. Or something. What we are invented we a term, a water mill. <laughs> a water mill. Yeah, but yeah, they had a whole, a whole area where you went in and it was just, I was like, how do they build this? It was so cool. So, yeah, Goblin's Feast. That's actually a really good point because we could we took like a cute selfie outside of the goblin house. We're like, you can't take any pictures or videos. I mean, unless you break the rules. But like we were able to be like, here we are at the goblin house, you know, cheese, because we're travel brats and we like to take pictures. Okay. So yeah, that that was really cute. And it kind of got you excited while you're waiting in the line. You're like, look at the goblin house. It looks scary. Um, and then speaking of like that whole thing that you were talking about with um, like the monsters and the setup, the number four that you had was a great house. The monstros or monsters of Latin America. That was cool. I really liked that too. And actually that was me and my sister's number one. We gave it a 10 and that was the last one we went in. Um, but I just loved how they, I mean, it was a little creepy, the little witch eating the baby at the beginning. But um, besides that, um, we just thought it was really well done and spooky. And like, I loved how like you're walking through this place and you look like you're in like a Colombian house kind of. Um, so I loved all kind of the theatrics and the decorations in that house. What'd you guys think of it? Yeah, I, I love this house. It was one of my favorites for sure. Definitely. I, I, I like this one more than the Goblin's Feast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. me too. But it was close. <laughs> it was close. They were both, I think they're both definitely necessary ones mm -hmm. um, to go into. Yeah. yeah, I would say they were pretty close for me. And I like, I mean, I thought it was a very unique theme. You know, the monsters of Latin America, calling it monstruo, monstruos, you know, like, I, I just think that 
it yeah the again i will say it the theming it was just really cool and very unique yeah yeah that was another one that had a big facade outside that you walked into yeah that was cool i like those they should do more of that i mean i know it takes a lot of you know i think the ones that they do inside the the studios have that kind of because like ghostbusters had it the triplets had it um monstros had it oh exhibits did too the museum exhibits the the deadly exhibits that's so Mm -hmm. funny it's it's just so interesting how certain things stick in your mind because Mm -hmm. obviously the goblins feast had it made an impression on me because again as i said i love the medieval era so i think that's probably why whereas like Mm -hmm. you're telling me that monstros had that and i'm like racking my brain trying to remember what it looked like and i'm like bloodlines had it yeah eternal okay speaking of eternal bloodlines Nat, that was your number five for us that was our like number three um and we give it a nine like out of ten matt what do you think of eternal bloodlines you know i i definitely expected more out of this house and i was a little i don't want to say let down because it was still a good house but it just it didn't it didn't hit the mark for me from what um what i was expecting out of it and especially because of course as a woman i was like oh this is because it it was called eternal bloodlines wasn't there like another part of the name? It had like a longer name, but it was basically like the women monsters, the female, the famous female monsters or like scary female creatures. And Mm. I just wanted it to be, I don't know, a little bit more fierce. And Mm -hmm. I didn't think that it was like the storyline of that one was fine for me. Mm -hmm. Like it was okay, but I think again, Maybe with that one, as I said earlier, I didn't really have expectations. I will say maybe I did have more of an expectation because I was like, ooh, women monsters. Yeah, we're going to see like the wife of Frankenstein and uh, the, or it's a bride of Frankenstein. And then is, what's Dracula's girl? What's, what's she called? (laughs) What's Dracula's girl? (laughs) Dracula's daughter. (laughs) Dracula's daughter. I don't know. But like, (laughs) I don't don't really know a lot of the classic female monsters. I think it's Van Helsing's daughter as well. Yeah, well, so like I I just expected uh I don't know it to be I just come back to the word fierce. I was just expecting that like women power and then I was like, well, maybe that's not what they're going for here and that makes sense cuz it's a spooky house. It's not like a female empowerment house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, though I get that because when we went in, I was like, okay, there is a good like there's a storyline here, maybe more so than some of the others, but like is that always good? Because I literally, that like girl pop, like the huntress pops out and I'm like, Katniss. <laughs> and like my little sister was like, what's going on? And then she popped out again. And I'm like, there she is again. Like, <laughs> And then there was like a vampire and then there was a werewolf. And I was like, what's happening? Like, <laughs> So yeah, I was like, what is the, the thing here? But yeah. I guess I didn't really do my research. <laughs> yeah, the storyline kind of got lost for me at times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Eternal Bloodlines, okay, maybe it's a little overrated. Um, Katniss was cute, but she wasn't very scary. Um, but yes, Natalie and I like that she was a girl because we're girls. <laughs> Female empowerment haunted house. <laughs> and then obviously Ghostbusters, uh, I think a lot of people may have overrated this. I mean, I rated it six, Nat. I mean, no, Nat rated it six. I don't know why I said that because I didn't go in it <laughs> because by the time we got to like that area of the park again because we started there and then went around it was like over a hundred minutes and we were that was like the 12 o'clock end of our journey and we were like all right whatever Ghostbusters how scary could it be it's cute we'll just skip it um but what'd you guys think of it I personally thought it was overrated it was probably one of my least favorite houses of the night um I thought like, you know, set wise, costume wise, things like that. It's really nice to look at. It's really pretty to look at. But as a house, it's it's a kid's movie that mm. they're throwing in the park to for the sake of having the IP at the park. So it was I don't want to call it a cash grab because it's not necessarily that, but it's it's essentially the cash grab of the theme of the park this year of the Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, Ghostbusters speaks for itself. It has such a name. And obviously, people that are maybe not gonna be excited about Insidious, because that's actually like a very scary theme. Ghostbusters 
is maybe going to feel a little bit more like light, but I'll be honest. I think because I thought, oh, this is for kids. I actually did get scared. Like in Ghostbusters, that was the one time I vocalized a, like a scream because in, there was one room that was really cool where everybody was frozen oh. and the room, like the whole room was just like covered in ice. It was so cool. And there were people, but there were also mannequins that were covered in ice and you didn't know who was real. And so I was at one point, I was looking this way and a guy came up and Matt, I think Matt, were you, you were behind me. So you saw the guy clock that I wasn't aware of him. And so I was looking this way and he stayed on me. He stayed oh, on me. No. And so, and all of a sudden I was just like, I'm looking. And then I saw him and I was like, and I screamed. And that was the only time I think I, I think I had little like ah, 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 moments. Yeah. Okay. That's making a face. But like, I, that was the only time where I like really like got scared and yeah. like, it was like a jump scare. I think I you. jumped back and I was like, wow, that guy really got me. Like he should be proud of himself because that was <laughs> That I was mean, totally... he followed you for a few steps. He like he he walked with her because she was looking <laughs> at the creepy. scenery. <laughs> yeah, it was, I, was, it was so, I was so in awe of the set. And I will say that Shane and I both multiple times said that Ghostbusters did have one of the best sets. Like I thought that they just did a really impeccable job with with the whole set of Ghostbusters. Um, and then the whole like frozen room was really cool. And obviously I got it's... scared. The house was based off of the new Ghostbusters movie, Frozen Empire. So oh, okay. I, I tried to watch the movie a couple of nights before we went. And it's just, it was, it's a kid's movie, you know? So it, if it was based off the original Ghostbusters, I'd probably be more excited about it. I would have been way more into it. But um, yeah, theming wise, it, it was a beautiful house. All this, I mean, Universal spends so much money on this event every year. So if you're not getting the top of the line in your house, then then it's an issue. <laughs> but yeah. they, 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 they definitely go all out whenever they can. I can so see Natalie though wandering through this house like this is exquisite. I'm like, <laughs> and then turning around and be like, oh, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> like, what is this? this real tap tap tap? <laughs> and Matt, Matt got to enjoy it because it was one of the very few times where he was behind me because mm. normally I would have him in front, but it was always like the guys. It would be either Shane, Callie, me, Matt. And Shane would lead, or we'd go the opposite way, and Matt would lead, and the girls would always be sandwiched in the middle because Callie and I are not like this is not our thing, and Shane and Matt love it. But there was, I think, one time maybe that I was in front for a little bit, and then I switched with you. It was so. right before we went in the house, and they're like, "Wait, no, <laughs> you go in front." Wait, no, switch, switch with me. I'm always on your left. Switch with me. Now you're on my right. <laughs> Literally, that was. There was one house, I can't remember which one it was, but you know, they let in the groups of people and there was a big group and I think somebody was like handicapped. So they paused for a minute to talk to that group of people when we, after we went in and my little sister starts freaking out. She's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's nobody behind us. There's nobody behind us. And I was like, what? No, they're gonna, like, it's a line. And she's like, no, there's no one, there's no one. And then like they eventually, the, that group of people caught up, but I was like, she was freaking out. Like, we're in here alone. <laughs> she, and that, that's when she was literally like, switch with me. <laughs> And I was like, oh, so now you want to be in the front. <laughs> oh, man. And you know what's funny is my one of my, like, favorite scary movies, because, again, I mean, it's a scary movie, but it's not necessarily, like, horror is the only category. Um, But I didn't – we didn't go to it because, honestly, we ran out of time. But, honestly, I was thinking about it, and I was like, the more I think about this, I don't know if I even want to go in it because it creeps me out, like, more than any of the other stuff, was A Quiet Place. And you rated it number seven. Was it disappointing or? It, I certainly, and I will say that A Quiet Place is one of the only themes that I was actually familiar with. I think that all of the other things, like, yeah, I know what goblins are. I know what Ghostbusters is. I like, you know, I, I had certain ideas of what these things were, but A Quiet Place is the only, I've, I've watched that movie. So I actually know 
the the characters of the story and so I kind of was like excited because I was just like oh this is like a a movie this is something I'm familiar with and it it was definitely cool but it was not as scary as I thought it was gonna be Mm -hmm. and they really had like the girl the main character you know the 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 deaf girl no is she deaf yeah she's the the daughter yeah the daughter they had her in like almost every room oh because like she's like leading you through I guess and then they had like the dad once maybe twice and then they had like a couple other characters like the mom was there a little bit but it just seemed like they had the deaf girl a lot like wouldn't you say Matt it just it, it felt like we saw her a lot and I was like okay, I, I, I get it. You're here, but like, I, I want to be freaked out. Right. Huh. That's weird. Like, I really would have expected that to be the most, like the most terrifying house. And the other thing was that I, I think Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but we noted after that house that that house had the least amount of human actors in it because a lot of the um, creatures were like animatronics. Oh, remember they had like Mm. the things that would come out at you, but they weren't people. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I don't think that's a person in a mask. I think that's just like something that's on a timer that's coming out at me. So you know what that was like? That was like Chucky because that was last a last year house, and I thought it was dumb. I mean, granted, the the Quiet Place monsters are scarier than Chucky, but Mm -hmm. like Chucky would just pop out and be like, eh. And I'd be like, whatever. <laughs> Push that thing back in the hole. Yeah, I would agree. It was definitely scarier than Chucky because, yeah, Chucky was not that great. But it still was just like, yeah, it just kind of didn't excite me as much as I thought it would. And I like the idea of them being masked people and not just like an, like, yeah. Team. Then they can play off people. Honestly, if like, because I'm not going to create a haunted house, but if I did this theme for like a haunted house and like pimped out my house or something, I think that I would literally have you like have to be quiet. And every time somebody spoke or anything, that thing just like jump (laughs) and like run around them and like run my, (laughs) because that's how it is. You have to be, so I was thinking like, oh my gosh, you're going to get in there and they're going to be like, you know, and you're going to be like, "Ah," you know, (laughs) Oh, no, never mind. I guess not. But <laughs> but we yeah. did try to be quiet. I mean, did we you? definitely were like, okay, we gotta like. Oh, good, you're on theme, Nat. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Um, I, I would say the house was overrated. Yeah, definitely. I expected more out of it. Um, I don't find the movies themselves to be that scary, so I wasn't too surprised that it wasn't that scary. But um, I definitely expected a little more out of it. It's one of the big IPs of the year. That Insidious and and Ghostbusters are the three IPs so you know you definitely expect a lot out of them but yeah it, it it's definitely overrated for me Matt, it's funny that you... oh sorry matt can you give us a quick definition of what you mean when you say ip intellectual properties like the um, the things that weren't created by universal the things that they actually brought in the houses that they brought in the different mm. brands or and whatnot yeah oh, so... like disney and star wars well Something yeah, like that, yeah. <laughs> Three out of the 10 houses are like not created by Universal's Mm -hmm. people, you know? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so that was the three ones that came from movies. The other seven were all themes that Universal, whoever they hire, created themselves. Oh, never mind then. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I'm weird like that where like some of those movies that are like actual horror movies don't scare me that much, but things like you know, a quiet place or even like I am legend. Can you imagine a haunted house from I am legend? Oh my gosh. I don't know. That fun. randomly got on that tangent, but that, that movie terrifies me and it's not even like a horror movie, but it is. <laughs> Trust me. See, a house like that could be fun because you would have to go through by yourself because there's, you know, you're the only one left alive. That is something too that I think because of the like, just I don't know. Of people. It- if they're listening, <laughs> this is a billion dollar idea, guys. I don't know. Well, yeah. well but ac- actually, Matt, literally that I think is a big difference, like a big scare difference between like what I've seen at 
Horror Nights and, and Universal and like other haunted houses were like Netherworld in Atlanta. They're, they're top 10 most scary haunted houses in the United States. And you go in alone. So not alone alone, like you can go in with your group, but you're not in like a line of people. So like you're, you know, whether there's two of you or like seven, you're, they send you in by yourself and they have like a timer and they wait till you're at a certain point before they let the next group in. So like, I mean, you could run into the group ahead of you if you like run, run, but it's, it's longer. You're like in there for like 30 to 45 minutes and you're kind of in your little group. So it, it gets a lot scarier and more real when you're like kind of almost by yourself. So, because it's like, you know, you just look at the long line of people ahead of you and they're talking or they're laughing or they're, and you're like, okay, this isn't, you know, we'll make it through. It's not real. It's not yeah. Real. You're kind of, you're kind of just getting funneled through and they are trying to keep everyone at a certain pace. So you can't, like, we were trying to walk slowly, but not too slow to where we would like get in trouble, mm -hmm. but had like Matt was like setting the pace. He would like, he has this little bounce. He's doing it right now. He has this little bounce. <laughs> that's creepy um, <laughs> so like we would just like kind of chug along and you know we didn't want to go too fast or too slow but I think you know it was probably each house was like what five minutes to walk through if that yeah yeah it was yeah. very short like that and that's another thing it's fine but oh, it's just different yeah yeah it's just different and I would say like so looking at our list, the last three, honestly, any one of these last three could be last place. Like, mm. I think that these three are pretty much interchangeable for me as far as like, I, I didn't need to go in, like, I wouldn't have done any of these last three again. And they are the uh, triplets of terror the deadly exhibits and major suites. So maybe Matt, if you could take us through what each of those three were about and why <clears throat> all kind of like equally could be last place. Cause I saw they were all last place on yours too, Sophia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three, three of the lamest ones I did. <laughs> um, I, I, I like triplets more than the rest of you guys did. I, you know, I was, I definitely expected more from it. I was really excited about that one, but in it, it was, I won't want to say it was a letdown, but it, it wasn't the best. Um, I believe it's based off a true story. Yeah, Matt, are you okay? Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> nah, I believe it is. Um, you know, don't quote me on that, but um, I, for me, there was a clear cut last place house and we'll get there, but um, I, I, mean, I enjoyed triplets a little bit more than the yeah, rest of the group did triplets was my number eight it wasn't 10 it wasn't the very last but I just I mean it was it was interesting and I do think that like the story of these three triplets these kids that like go on a killing rampage killing spree is is like that's the stuff of nightmares and that's definitely like a scary movie in and of itself yeah, I think, uh, and it's because some of that stuff is the reason that people love it more, like Matt, and some of it's the reason that, that scares me more. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I, I, I mean, yes, it was because my sister and I were arguing, like, okay, we not arguing, like, blah, 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 but like, we were debating, like, okay, we're rating these, but like, are we rating them for scary? Are we rating them for like which ones we like the most? Because sometimes those go hand in hand, and sometimes like Triples of Terror was probably one of the most scary ones for me, but I didn't like it because I'm not like a huge gore gore person so we went through there and i was like oh true story super gory you know like yeah like saw is not my jam like <laughs> insidious i'm like oh you know but yeah i i thought it was really like well done for how scary it was and yeah you walk in and it shows you the story on the news about the crazy triplets and then you have to go like live it in their house and you're like oh. but so that was scary to me but i just thought like oh man like i think about it being real Cause I'm like, okay, true story. Some of these other ones are totally like mythical monsters, all that stuff, fake. So I keep reminding myself like, this isn't real, <laughs> but yeah. I think what I didn't love so much about that one was that it felt like every room was a variation of the same thing. Mm. Like it was just like, oh, they cut up these people and their guts are everywhere. I was like, I think there were three birthday parties. I was like, 
how many more rooms can we walk in where there's a birthday party of people that are just dead everywhere? It, I mean, well, don't like, don't you remember? I know there was at least two different rooms that had birthday parties where there were just like guts all over the table with like birthday decorations. I was like, this the is triplets, this everybody has a birthday. There's three kids. <laughs> Natalie, Natalie going, <laughs> another birthday party? <laughs> Well, I want to know is it's like after everyone dies at the first birthday party, are we really throwing another birthday party? Yeah, what are they like reincarnated to do this again? Like, what is this? Like, oh, you killed mom at one, you killed dad at the other, now you got the brother at the third. Like, who threw that third birthday party? What did you think? You can't just kill them all in one night. (laughs) Why the separate nights? (laughs) You know, honestly, in this house, too, I think it was this one. Um, the thing that scared me the most was the kid that like was out of control in it like I felt so bad for this poor kid he was behind us and I'm not sure if you know he was a little bit you know some sort of autistic or something but I felt so bad he seemed like he was freaking out and I was like why are his parents making him do this well like even last year I saw that where the kid was younger but he was like begging it was like a seven-year-old begging his dad not to like pull him into this house and the dad was like come on son (laughs) like time to be a man and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to like take this poor kid out and be like, I'll wait with your kid. Like, don't do that to him. But I felt so bad where I kept turning around. Like, he, so he he slid past me and scared me because I thought at first, like this hand came from nowhere and I thought he was part of the attraction. And then I was like, oh my gosh. And the kid's like, he's wearing like a scary shirt, but he's like, hi. And he like inched past us and got in front of us. And then I kept looking back, like at his group behind us. And I was like, do they like, do we get behind them or do they want to get in front of us to be with their kid or, and he just kind of like inched by us the whole time. And he, people kept jumping out and he kept like freaking out. And I was like, oh gosh, poor kid. And then finally he was like, you guys can go in front of me, but he like put his hand right in front of my face. And I was like, like, are you going to hit me or something? And he was like, go in front of me. And I was like, oh, like you can't hear with all the screams and the noise. So we got out and I was like, (laughs) I was more scared of the people in the house. I didn't know what was going to happen. But anyway, so that was an interesting experience. Most memorable travel story. <laughs> but other than that, Triples of Terror, you know, it it is what it is. I, I, I see where you're coming from, Matt, though, because it was well done. Um, So I, I gave it like a not a super low. I mean, it was we only did seven, so it was my last. But it was like a six for us. Yeah. Yeah. I like gore, so that's why I enjoyed that one more. I'm a gore guy. That's okay, a game. A game for <laughs> your life. Guy. <laughs> and then okay deadly exhibits natalie you had it at nine i actually kind of like this one but it wasn't a fave it was like a, a number five on the list for me it it just it didn't really go anywhere for me like i i i think that a a museum of deadly exhibits could have been a more interesting theme mm-hmm. and again obviously like it was a really cool set and like you're obviously like okay we're in this museum but like to be honest I couldn't really tell you much about that house like it didn't leave the same kind of impression that some of the other houses left and I Mm -hmm. walked out and I was like that was pretty forgettable for me Mm -hmm. and our group we all felt pretty consistent about that um that for us deadly exhibits was just like not as as thrilling as some of the others yeah i agree with that i think it again it was forgettable i would say that again the end they always get you at the end there was that thing standing outside and it literally i didn't the funny thing is i didn't even notice with it like hit me like the the big cloak on it like hit me in the face and i was like oh like the curtain and then my little sister starts screaming because she like looks up and it's like that giant thing and i'm like walking away like man they just hit me in the face like <laughs> That, <laughs> that actually did get me I will say that was one of the other moments that I I yelped I wouldn't say I screamed but I had a yelp that escaped <laughs> and what's funny is I knew that was going to happen because that exit is across from one of the other exits and so we had gone through whatever was near the deadly exhibits we had already done the other one so I had seen that that person, that creature was scaring people. So I knew, I knew he was there and I still got got scared. So I will say that 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 was one thing, even though Deadly Exhibits was like kind of meh for me, it did scare me at the end. Yeah. Matt, do you like Deadly Exhibits? 
Not really. I, I agree totally with what Natalie said that it didn't really go anywhere. There was no point to it. There was no story to it. There wasn't really, mm-hmm. you know, there were monsters in there, but yeah, it just didn't, it didn't do anything for me. There was no gore. There was no story. There was no excitement. Yeah. yeah it was just, it was just there. It was a house for the sake of a house. Yeah. It could have been a lot better. And on, on the better. last on the last one, Major Sweets. This was another one I feel like similar where it could have been really good, but it was just like ew, gross and weird and like the little de- decapitated children. And I was like, no thanks. Yeah, it was just kind of like, I don't know. I just, it was kind of icky. I don't know. And then I thought like there'd be clowns and there'd be like a creepy Willy Wonka or something. And then it was just like a super let down. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a creepy Willy Wonka kind of thing going on too, but you know the something that bothered me a lot about major suites was not just like it wasn't a great house but it was a lot of recycled parts from chucky oh that i noticed so a lot of things now? i'm like that was from chucky that was from chucky this was from chucky and i believe it's in the same spot as chucky too well matt inflation what what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> universal <laughs> don't feel inflation <laughs> yeah you're like universal you have no excuses we pay how much for tickets and how many people come to halloween Horror nights please <laughs> yeah it's in the same spot as as chucky was last year so i noticed a lot of similarities in, in certain elements of the house um but it had you know the storyline has such potential you know the storyline had a lot of potential and i don't want to say they dropped the ball but they certainly didn't take it and run with it <laughs> yeah i agree yeah very but, you know there's there's a lot of you know rumors circling around the interwebs that universal was kind of playing it safe right now because next year with epic opening they're really going to go all out for for that so you know fingers crossed there but that's that's what you know the interwebs are saying that they kind of didn't really give it all they had because they're 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 saving it but it's all speculation speculation i could see that well there was one thing that you guys really liked and it was the show so tell me tell me i didn't go to it tell me oh sophia it was so cool yeah i mean the like acrobatics alone like it's a it's it's like a creepy circus and nocturnal circus if you would a nocturnal circus yes (laughs) And so there's like this main guy who comes out and is talking about this woman that he loves and how he has this terrible nightmare where uh, he has to watch her die every night in some sort of circusy way because she's like one of the girls who like gets locked in a cage that's filled with water like a magician's assistant of sorts yeah she's the magician's assistant so she you know there are all these different ways she get chopped in half she whatever so every single night he watches her die and he tells the audience but tonight i'm gonna save her so you watch him try to save her and the story was really i thought it was so cool and I won't, I won't spoil the ending because I thought the ending was very ingenious. Like I really appreciated the way that they told the story and how it all came to an end. And then within all of that, there are all these just incredible dancers, acrobatics, um, fire dancers, fire poi, uh, flips and jumps and stunts. Silks. Silks. There was a girl on silks at one point. I mean, Sophia, it was so stunning. My jaw mm. was on the floor the entire show. And it was mm. a 30 minute show. Like we got the good out of it. I mean, I was like, just flabbergasted. It was amazing. Yeah. So I would say like, if that's how they do, if the Nightmare Fuel show is if, if like whatever show they're offering, definitely go. But One thing that uh, when we went, our friend said that they had gone last year to see it and they were like, you have to get in line, like at least, he was like, we have to get in line at least an hour before. We ended up getting in line, I think a half hour, maybe 45 minutes. I Mm -hmm. I think it was a half hour. It might've been even 20 minutes. Like we Uh, were- Yeah, we we cut it close, but we we got close. And we were totally fine. We had great seats. But definitely, if you go see the show, you want to get in line at least a half an hour to an hour ahead. So it will take some time away from your ability to go do the houses. But I would say that, you know, if you're feeling like, okay, look, 
I don't want to do all 10 houses. I feel like I'm going to be running around. I want to eat some of the food. I want to go to the top six houses and I want to see the show. That's still a solid night because, you know, we'll just mention real quick because we want to bring this episode to a close, how great the food is. The food and the drink options, there are a lot of really creative things that you can try. And we we tried a lot of the food and there were some definite highlights. And maybe Matt, you can go through the Rolodex of some of the highlights. Um, but we just, yeah, we tried a lot of the food and would just like walk around and get in line with the food. We sat down a couple of times, but I just think you can kind of tailor the night however you want it to be. But for us, the show was an absolute highlight. And yeah. with the show, I think that's a nice thing to have a break where you can kind of sit down it between fits. haunted houses. Yeah. yeah. And also the snacks are the last question about just kind of like where to go, what haunted houses to do the show, et cetera. How did you guys kind of navigate? Did you really like look at the app and pay attention to wait times or did you kind of just do a full circle and kind of hit all the ones on the way? Um, I, I do a little bit of research on what, what the best way to really attack the houses is. And, um, this year it seems like the best way to do it is to wait in the New York holding area and then hit all the houses in the front and then work your way to the back. Mm, Whereas last sense. year it was start in the back, get all those houses done and then work your way to the front. So it's, it's generally a good idea to start with the main IPs to get those out of the way, because those lines will be through the roof throughout the entire night and then work your way across like that. So like, that's why we started right away with Insidious. Um, we did wait for a quiet place pretty much the whole night until the end of the night. That's when we finally did it because it was low. But um, yeah, that's that's what we did this year. We started in the front and worked our way back. Oh, that's mm. right. We did a quiet place at the end. I got it mixed up. I was thinking the opposite. Here's what I have the privilege of doing. I just say, Matt and Shane, you guys plan the night and I will follow your lead and you just take me wherever I need to go. And when there's a break and I want to get food, we can stop and get food, right? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Travel Brat Matt and Travel Brat Shane. <laughs> and no Shane's, Shane's wife, Callie, actually kind of but like, I want to try this food. I want to try this thing. I want to try that thing. So she kind of so, drove the bus on. Yeah. We have to go here to try this. We have to go there to eat that. Yeah. Callie was our foodie for the night. Mm -hmm. And Matt and Shane really had the houses figured out. And then I just got to uh, enjoy the ride. So, <laughs> so for once, not you didn't have to be the travel brat. You just got to kick your feet up and just follow the leader. <laughs> she was just the brat. She I was just, just the brat. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Okay. Were there anything that you guys tried food wise that you just absolutely loved? Oh yeah. yeah. I, I will say there is, um, I think it's by the, the animal show. There's a little bar and food cart underneath that. They have a walking taco out of this world. You can get it with Doritos or Fritos. I think it was, but we got it with Doritos cause that's how we roll. But it was so good. It was so good. And it was only like, maybe nine or 12 bucks, something like that. It wasn't it crazy. For Universal, that was, is not bad. Yeah, it was on the lower side and mm -hmm. the portion, the it was portion huge. Bag was massive. I was like, yeah. okay. The, the bag was like this. Yeah, oh, it was wow. a bag designed for Halloween Horror Nights. It says it right on the bag, which is pretty funny, but oh, it was cute. out of this world. And then also there's um, right by the, um, the crepery right there by the park across the street from that there's like a little mexican food spot they had the, what was it? it was a mole pork or was it mole chicken yeah it was like a it was a mole pork and then they had this chicken that was on like a, a stick that had this like was it a chimichurri sauce or no it was like some i think it was some sort of like i think it was chimichurri i think it was green yeah mm. and it was so so good so good so we we definitely I was grateful to have Callie because she had done the research beforehand about which stations had what food and so as we planned where we were going she'd be like oh as we go to this house we're going to be near this food station so we can try this so we absolutely maximized our time and our ability to do as much as we could because instead of being like oh we're on this side of the park but we want this food so now we have to walk all the way back it was like well we're not going to get that food until we're on that side of the park like we just only did things where we were and you know really quickly I'll say because we haven't mentioned this yet but the scare zones were really great this year 
and you'll hit those just by walking through the park like you don't necessarily have to plan for those um, but the scare zones are really cool and they can really get up in your face and they can get up more in your face than they even can in the houses because in the houses they're you know kind of sequestered to their own little corner and can only pop out and go back like that one guy that followed me i think you know, he had a, maybe a little bit more free reign, but I feel like even he went a little outside of his zone in the house, whereas in the scare zones, they can just follow you the whole scare zone. Yeah, so. those are so much fun. Yeah. And I love Halloween Horror Nights this year. And I want to know, kind of to close, what did you guys think of just the overall experience compared to previous years? Matt? I... You know, last year was our first year going, you know, as a couple and as individuals, but I, I, I really think last year was better. Truly mm. the scare zones, the houses, the stories within the houses, I thought, and last year they had this item called the peanut butter burger. And I still dream about it to this day. It was one of the greatest things I've ever eaten in my entire life. But I think overall last year was a, a better event, but I will say this year, it's a great event. It's a great event always you know you're always going to get top-notch steaming great food great time good entertainment it's really really fun it's a good thing to do if you can if you can't get out there to do it but i'm i'm excited to see what next year has mm. I, I think the main, yeah the main difference for me obviously yeah last year being our first time it's just any any time that you do something for the fir first time it's always going to be especially memorable but last year we didn't see the show and so this year, because we saw the show that like took it up a notch for me because the, the performance was just, I mean, they bring in a troupe. They literally hire a company that does this and that's who they bring in. So they're not just like hiring individual people and creating their own show. They're like hiring a mega company that is like a troupe of of dancer acrobatics artists like all that stuff so mm. that to me kind of leveled up this year but as far as like the overall experience with houses I would say that last year I I kind of was overall more impressed I would say I was scared more scared last year more entertained this year and also less exhausted this year even though I was exhausted because instead of starting at eight o'clock I started at 11 in the morning yeah <laughs> Well, Travel Brats, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. And if you want to learn more about Halloween Horror Nights and Universal as a whole, check out our previous episode that Natalie and Matt did. It's hilarious and so much fun on episode 192. And then again, guys, just visit UniversalOrlando.com for everything else. Catch you guys next time. Happy Halloween. Bye. Bye-bye-bye.